Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I can't believe, you know, I've been in this industry for like 35 years now, in academia, in various places, and this is the first time that I've had the opportunity to speak to Master Gardeners. No one ever invited me until now. So uh, I really do appreciate, appreciate uh, the invitation, and uh, we're really excited to, to be here and to talk about turf. Um, a little bit about my background, as I, as I mentioned, uh, I don't want to age myself, but ever since I was 16 years old, I started working on a golf course. I, I played golf as a teenager, and uh, I, I you know, developed a, a love and a passion for turf. And so uh, before I even go on, I, just be honest now, how many, other, how many turf lovers, I know we have a lot of plant lovers, out here, but be honest, how many, how many of you are turf lovers? Okay, we have a few. Now I'm going to ask you at the end of today, and I hope, uh, hope we have a few more hands uh, up. But, uh, so I started, started working on a golf course, and uh, then quickly realized you could, you could make a living out of uh, studying turf and, and working with turf, and so... Uh, I went to Penn State University, I'm from Colorado originally, went to Penn State, one of the top turf programs in the country. Uh, go go live. You got some in your lines here? Good. Uh, however, I only stayed there a couple of years, uh, tried to save my parents some money and the out-of-state tuition, and ended up going back home to Colorado State and got my degree in horticulture uh, at Colorado State University, uh, also a, a good, very good turf program there as well. And uh, it's kind of... You know, the more I, the more I was in school, just like I think a lot of people here, the more, the more you study something, the more you realize you don't know, right? And so, um, talked to my advisor then about uh, about what you know my future. I wanted to be a, originally wanted to be a golf course superintendent, and uh, then he said, well, you know, you can you can go to graduate school and, and learn more. And so he suggested something very that was very good for my career, and that was to go down to the southern part of the U.S and learn about warm season grasses. And so I went to Auburn University. Or Eagle, anybody else? <laughs> uh, so I uh, ended up getting two degrees at Auburn, uh, master's and PhD uh, in agronomy and also in botany. And uh, again, working mostly in, in turf. And then uh, from there, my first real job was at Oklahoma State University. Any cowboys here? <laughs> All right. <laughs> And so I was, uh, I was uh, assistant professor of turf research and teaching at Oklahoma State. And um, you, might, you might start to think, can this guy keep a job for very long? <laughs> but I uh, uh, decided you know, to move on to bigger and better things, even though I really, really liked Oklahoma. It was, it's a great place. Uh, but then I went to Michigan State University, East Martins. <laughs> and so went, went to Michigan State. It was in a, uh, also a you know, outstanding turf program, and uh, I was there for only about three years. I I'm not sure why, but uh, it's one of those things you 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 have a dream, and sometimes you feel like you need to follow that. So from there, I went and worked uh, for the United States Golf Association, which was always a kind of a childhood dream of mine. And so I was an agronomist for the USGA in the northeast part of the U.S. And so I traveled a lot of travel. Uh, probably visited. Uh, more than 800 golf courses in my time there. So that's more than 800 reports. Uh, this was a kind of a consulting service that was partly subsidized by the USGA, and partly you know, funded by the, the golf courses. And so um, that's, a, that's a tough life. It's a, it was certainly a lot of fun, uh, you know, meeting, uh, you know, being a part of championships and just helping, helping individual clubs with their turf issues. But, uh, you know, that's another thing, you know, when you, you leave something, then you realize how much uh, you miss academia. So I think, that's, uh, I think uh, that's where I was meant to be. And so I was lucky to get back, uh, you know, at uh, a later stage in life. And, uh, and so I've been at UCR since 2008. And so um, unfortunately, uh, really for me and for our industry, I'm, I'm the last, really the last turf specialist standing in the state of California. I, I think probably, maybe you've had uh, Dr. Harbandi maybe at one time speak with you. Uh, Ali Harbandi uh, was an advisor up in Alameda County. Uh, 
and uh, he just recently retired, and so folks have either left or retired, and, and the university hasn't filled the position. So we have, you know, arguably the largest the largest state, most largest turf industries, and um, we have one one turf specialist, unfortunately. And um, recently, you know, someone pointed this out recently. If we took California, and we kind of flipped it over and put it on the East Coast. And it would cover, I don't know how many states, eight or nine states. And if you look at all the turf specialists in those states, it would be more than 40 faculty uh, in, in, the size, in the state the size of California. And so here, here, here I am. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, again, happy to be here and uh, to talk turf with you today. And, and again, um, you know, we've... Uh, We've got challenges, uh, certainly growing turf, and in, 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 especially in this day and age, and with just continuing drought conditions. So, uh, we're going to talk a lot about things today. I, I want this to be interactive. If you got questions, um, I, I don't think I need to tell you that. But I think you're, you, you'll fire away when you're when ready. Uh, when uh, Marco and Pretty come up, I'll have them, you know, give you a little bit of uh, idea about their background. But uh, happy to have have them here today to help out. Um, so I need my, I need to find my remote. Ah, there we go. Great. Okay. So you've got your handout now. I just want to kind of go over what we're going to try to discuss today. Um, I'm going to start things off and just sort of set the tone, just so the background about turf, some of the, the, the essentials. I mean, obviously, uh, it's too much to cover in, in the amount of time we have, but uh, we'll, we'll try to cover the basics. And then uh, Pretty's going to go over the, the major cool season turf grasses with emphasis on, on lawns. Uh, and then Marco's going to cover the, the warm season grasses. I mean, in our state, with our climatic conditions, we can grow just about every, every major turf grass species. So we're pretty much covering them all, except ones that might be very specific to golf courses. Uh, then uh, we have some breaks and lunch uh, in between there. And uh, then uh, because it is our, we're rookie, rookie master gardeners here. Uh, we, I know there's a segment called Ask the Master Gardener. We're excited about that. You'll have to lead us through that uh, session. And then um, this is kind of, the afternoon's gonna be a little bit, um, uh, we're going to kind of be winging it a little bit because we didn't know where exactly we were, we were, where this uh, presentation was going to be held, and uh, we thought about doing some rotations. But we'll we'll just see what we're what we can accomplish this afternoon. We have a lot of things to cover, but uh, I have some major areas that I want to talk about, and and we're going to start this afternoon with water management because that is the key uh, these days, and and you know we uh, we all need to. To understand how to how to uh, you know manage water on, on turf, and uh, I think everyone has their stories. Uh, I've got my neighbor stories of uh, 365 days a year. You know the, the irrigation system's on, regardless of what's going on elsewhere. But uh, so we want to talk about that, and then uh, uh, talk a little bit about establishment and culture and, and pest management as well. So, uh, but we're we're really here to answer hopefully all the questions you have and uh, so we'll just kind of go and we'll we'll see what happens okay uh, references I mean there's a lot of them the one that when I used to teach you know turf management kind of the introductory course uh, there's a book uh, called turf, turf, turf grass management by Turgeon you know you can tell how dated how old I am I, I've got the fifth edition here well now there's the ninth edition uh, and you know, again, now you can get it, you know, sort of on your on your nook or, or whatever, you, however you'd like to to read it. But uh, that's that's what I'd suggest if you want just a good reference. Uh, it kind of covers, uh, especially like this one, how it kind of covers this. It's a little bit more. I don't want to say scientific, but it, it just has a little bit more meat to it. And those of us in this room, I think that's what you know we want, right? As opposed to just uh, kind of very superficial uh, coverage of of this subject, so I offer that. But there's there's a lot of other things. I haven't even had a chance to go through, 
uh, your handbook. I understand there's a chapter or two on turf. Okay, um, but uh, well, so this is certainly be a supplement to to uh, your knowledge base on, on, on turf grasses. Um, so let's just cover some basic definitions uh, to get things started. Uh, you know, what is a turf grass? And this is kind of the standard thing, a contiguous or fancy word for connecting uh, ground cover that tolerates persistent mowing and traffic. So there's a lot of grass species in the Poaceae family, uh, but there's only a, a limited number that can really tolerate lower, lower mowing and, and traffic. So, and by the way, um, us turfies, if you will, we spell turf grass as one word. You, you put it into a word and it always separates it for you, right? It's spell check, but uh, we, we tend to use it as one. So uh, uh, that's something to think about. Uh, turf kind of by itself is typically the plant, the plants, because there's literally millions, you know, of, of plants in a turf stand and the underlying soil. So that's when we usually say just kind of shorten it, we're not just talking about the plant, we're talking about the soil that's under underlying as well. Uh, and then sod is very similar, but that's usually something that's going to be harvested uh, for transplanting. And then uh, just the types of turf that we'll talk about, or the, the, the kind of major areas, we're going to spend most of our time kind of on the lawn turf, but that's more of the decorative uh, you know, turf grasses, uh, lawns, obviously sports, sports turf, utility turf would be more roadsides, right-of-ways, etc. you know, that sort of thing. So, just some basic definitions there. Okay, so here's one thing I'm both proud of, but also it's a huge challenge to us. This was taken, this was like a NASA image uh, taken back in 2006. And this kind of shows you the, you know, what part of our country is is covered in, in, in turf, and uh, actually, it's quite large. Uh, Forty-seven million acres, or about two percent of the surface area, is, is turf in the U.S., uh, which makes us the largest irrigated crop. So, on one hand, you could be proud of that, I guess. On the other hand, we're the largest irrigated crop, right? And so uh, when you're running out of water, especially in the Southwest, I mean, that's obviously a challenge. And so um, that's kind of uh, why we have a huge target, uh, you know, on us. And, and uh, you know, the, when, when we have drought and we have water restrictions, uh, you know, the first thing we typically hear is, uh, you know, we need to take out turf. You know, turf's bad. It's a water hog. Um, you know, we need to do. You know, we, we just need to get rid of it. And um, I maintain, or I like to, to talk about today. You know, the benefits of it and why we should we, we should try to maintain it where it's useful, um, and and just do the right thing. Let's in, instead of just taking out the grass. Uh, you know, why don't we try to educate my neighbors on both sides who irrigate 365 days a year regardless of whether it's raining or not. So um, there, so I think there's a lot of education and, and I think we can have we can have our turf and we can have our, our water resources as well. So what are some of the benefits? Obviously I think there's a lot of folks in this room who grew up like I did outdoors uh, there was no uh, television. Well, we had television, but uh, there was no. <laughs> was not that, not that old, right? <laughs> but uh, I remember when I came home from school, I was out in the backyard playing on the grass. And um, I wish my children were doing the same these days, but they're they're not. Uh, at least they do have some activities. Uh, but uh, this is there's a lot to be said. I think about you know these these pictures. You know, say a lot uh, in terms of, of some of the benefits of, of, of turf, both you know athletics and recreation and just enjoyment. You know, green space. Um, so, in terms of other benefits, so there's there's obviously recreational benefits. There's obviously the 
the you know aesthetic benefits. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, this this to me is is uh, you know a pretty picture. But there's also a lot of functional benefits of, of turf, and um, you know I don't want to go over these individually because I think they're kind of self. A lot of them are self-explanatory, but uh, I just kind of wanted to cover some of the you know some of the things that maybe you haven't thought about in terms of, of the benefits. First of all, carbon sequestration. Um, turf grasses, just like any other plant, would be photosynthesized, right? So what are they taking uh, in from the atmosphere? Taking in carbon dioxide, right? And uh, fortunately, the other challenge is they're losing water uh, to those, those same pores, those stomata, right? But the carbon sequestration part, I mean, you know, we know carbon CO2 levels are elevating in the atmosphere. Uh, many believe that that's uh, involved in terms of issues like climate change. And turf happens to be very good at sequestering carbon. And what it does is you look at the, the way the turf plant is. Number one, we don't plow it up annually like, let's say, a crop. Um, it's usually going to be there for quite a while. And so where does that carbon go? It ends up in kind of the organic matter in the soil, so it's uh, it's bound there. And, and again, um, obviously, there's you know there's been studies done. And if you just look at just the sequestration of, of carbon, um, it's it's quite quite large and um, as good or better than grasslands. You know, native grasslands, uh, certainly other plant materials. But one of the challenges is that, you know it's still a net positive sequestration, but Obviously, we have to then think about you know the mower that mows the grass and that that CO two. There's some evolution back there or something you know being you know returned to the atmosphere. And then even on larger facilities like this golf course, you've got the you know the the energy to pump that water to the, the course. So there's there's some. I, I don't want to stand here and say tell you that you know it's uh, it's all good and every benefit. But if you take if you take the pluses and the minuses, there's still a net sequestration of carbon. So I think it's a very beneficial, uh, uh, you know, uh, attribute to to turf grasses. And then obviously, heat dissipation uh, it, I think is is um, is huge there, just in terms of the just being a plant itself, but also as we know, you know, turf is. You know, it's during that process of photosynthesis, there's also transpiration going on, water's being lost, just like when we perspire, that cooling effect when, when uh, perspiration evaporates, the same thing from, from turf grass, and so that, that adds to that, uh, that heat dissipation. Um, some of us are allergic to turf, uh, but in general, having a cover like that versus the dust uh, that may be created by not having turf around uh, certainly would reduce those allergens. Um, uh, there's been a lot of studies done uh, over the years, uh, kind of about 20, 25, 30 years ago. The big issue for most of the country with turf was not so much maybe water. Well, it may have always been water out here, but in other parts of the country, it's like, oh, it's the chemicals. That you know you're applying to, to grass. What are they're they're bad. They're you know and they're what happens to them. Well, a lot of studies have been done and show and actually have shown that turf is a very effective filter to uh, to uh, you know chemical whether they're pesticides or nutrients or or just um, if it's kind of serving as a somewhat of a like a, a bioswell so to speak. Um, and again, it goes back to that organic matter. Is it helping to filter uh, filter that uh, those those chemicals and, and typically the, the the microorganisms in that in that uh, organic matter uh, lead to that decomposition to something benign. Uh, so these are just just some of the other things to, to think about in terms of uh, you know the, the the benefits and you know it's not just looking pretty. Or something that you know, certain people, you know, want to go and play golf. Uh, there's a lot of other benefits to turf grass. However, that said, um, you know, as much as I love turf, 
there are places where it really doesn't it really doesn't make sense and and uh, this is one of them. I didn't take this picture of it. It was uh, I borrowed it from from a colleague, but uh, I mean that's silly there. I mean that's absolutely unnecessary. And you know you know even if there was some particular use there, just irrigating that irrigating that without you know. And trying to conserve water would be a challenge there. So uh, with that, just next kind of thing, just kind of want to talk about in general what we, how we evaluate turf, what, how we, you know, what, what, we, what we consider good in terms of a, of a stand of turf. And there's basically two different categories. There's the, the visual turf quality and then more of the functional uh, quality aspects and so obviously number one is color and uh, we'll talk a lot about color today it's one of the reasons why we don't use a, a whole set of turf grasses up here we're going to talk about that uh, that use inherently use much less water than the other ones that stay green uh, year-round so color is obviously a major issue uh, density is important too and that's just easily defined as you know, the number of shoots uh, per unit area. Texture, when we talk about texture with turf quality, we're not so much talking about whether this is smooth or, or soft to the touch. Texture is the width of the leaf blade. So, for example, you know, Pretty's going to talk to you about the cool season grasses and some of the older types of tall fescue. Tall fescue is kind of one of the you know, king, king of the lawn grasses still in, in California. And uh, although there's been, there's been great efforts in terms of making tall fescue finer textured, uh, that's an example of something that's more what we call coarse textured. Um, and then uh, the fine leaf fescues are kind of the other side of the spectrum, more needle-like, so we, you know, those are, those are fine textured uh, grasses. So uniformity is another thing, the even appearance. That could be related in terms of the species of turf that's in a stand, or maybe even the fact that there's weeds in a, in a stand would disrupt uniformity. So uh, that's another aspect. Smoothness uh, is more related to athletic fields. And then the growth habit, which I'll cover uh, a little bit more in a moment, but that's kind of important in terms of how we um, maybe what choices we use for turf grasses and certainly becomes very important in terms of when you are trying to identify maybe what a species uh, of grass. So if, you, if you kind of know what its growth habit is and you can look for those, those features, then uh, it'll, it'll be much easier to, uh, to distinguish which one, which one you're looking at there. So those are the, those are the um, visual quality characteristics, functional quality, um, a lot of these get into the aspect back to kind of athletic field management, sports turf management, but rigidity, resistance to compression, you know, elasticity, you know, you put some kind of pressure or, you know, somebody walks on the lawn or, or there's, um, you know, some type of sporting activity and the, the ability of those, those leaves to kind of bounce back from that compression. Um, resiliency, very important when it comes to to sport, again, sporting uh, activities, you know, soccer, even golf. Uh, ball roll is, you know, obviously very important in golf. Um, we don't typically really value much uh, yield. I mean, we don't grow turf for, you know, we're not, it's not like a forage gra grass, uh, but at the same time, you know, yield can tell us a lot about the health of the uh, of the plant, and then uh, another one that's you know often you know it's kind of thrown around in the turf, just among the turf world, uh, but it's good to know just in case you hear this is verdure, and that's the the amount of shoots remaining after the turf is is mowed, and of course uh, rooting is another aspect there, and recuperative capacity. So these are just some of the things we think about and, and you know, these, these quality characteristics uh, about turf grasses. So, um, stole this one from the textbook here, but just to kind of go over the, the turf plant, 
Uh, again, this, this sort of covers everything here, but we've got a single plant here, right? And, um, you know, here's the chute, and you've got, um, you know, leaf sheets and blades, etc. And very, you know, we're not going to go into a lot today about the identify, you know, key identifying characteristics, but if we were, you know, really interested in, you know, just going out there and distinguishing, I mean, a lot of these grasses you probably know already. Um, some of them are a little tough, they, you know, in this sort of situation, they're going to look very similar to you, but I think, you know, the more you have exposure to these various turf grasses, you kind of can just pick them out just by looking at them. You don't have to get down with your, your hand lens. But uh, when you're learning, and even, you know, I, I've had to do this several times myself just to, you know, among some of these species, you know, you look for characteristics like the ligule or oracles, um, which are structures kind of at the, the, you know, the junction of the leaf blade and the, and the sheath. Um, obviously, the, in the flowering care, the type of inflorescence, we'll, I'll show you something there in a moment about that. But getting back to those, that growth habit, um, what's key is, is the three different types. We, we have what are called the bunch type grasses, which primarily tiller. And so here's a, you know, you, you think about a, a larger plant, you know, you know, that has nodes and inner nodes. Well, just if you just compress that like an accordion, and you've got all these, you've got this very, very compressed uh, shoot, and there's nodes there, and so these tillers are being formed right, right there, kind of where the, where the growing point is, and so you'll get a, you'll get these tillers form here, and then the grass will just keep forming tillers, so it's in a kind of a bunch type habit. So, like tall fescue, at least most of the the older types of tall fescue are, are kind of that bunch type tillerine grass. And, and you know, other, other grasses that produce these other two types, so above ground horizontal shoots are stolons, and below ground horizontal shoots, which is going to produce another plant, those are rhizomes. So plants can have all three of those, or they could have just be just stoloniferous, but probably maybe in form some tillers as well or they could be rhizomatous. So uh, uh, this is just kind of a general, I, I, you know, just depiction, simple depiction of the, of the turf plant. And then, again, if it gets down primarily to the, to the ID characteristics, which is not always something we have because turf is mowed typically on a regular basis. I mean, we've tried not to mow these for a couple of weeks, and you can see some of these are flowering now, but other, other of these grasses, that, you know, are, are just still low enough. They're not, you know, when they're maintained at a lower height of cut, they're not going to flower. But these are the three major types of uh, of inflorescences, and again, it's primarily important or useful when you're talking about trying to identify, you know, one species versus uh, another.